part three. It's taking longer to tell this story than I thought it would. But at least it'll be on there. And then I'll post it to Rumble. As always, I will fix up all these videos and uh, get all the tags and descriptions in. But I have a few followers. And I think this is a very important message for them. So I'm going to go back <laughs> to where I was in part two. Hmm. Pharaoh had gathered his army and followed the slaves. After he departed, there were riots, disorders behind him, for the cities were plundered. The laws were cast out of the judgment, halls, and trampled under feet. Oh, the laws were cast out of the judgment, halls, and trampled under foot in the streets. The storehouses and the granaries were burst open and robbed. Roads were flooded and none could pass along them. People lay dead on every side. The palace was split and the princes and officials fled so that none was left with authority to command. The lists of numbers were destroyed. Public places were overthrown and households became confused and unknown. Pharaoh pressed on in sorrow for behind him all was desolation and death. Before him were things he could not understand, and he was afraid. But he carried himself well and stood before the host with courage. He sought to bring back the slaves, for the people said their magic was greater than that. Greater than the magic of Egypt. He sought to bring back the slaves, for the people said their magic was greater than the magic of Egypt. Well, I'll get an email on that. Moses was a musician, uh, musician, a magician. Oh. The host of Pharaoh came upon the slaves by the saltwater shores, but was held back from them by a breath of fire. A great cloud was spread over the host and darkened the sky. None could see except for the fiery glow and the unceasing lightnings which rent the covered clouds overhead. A whirlwind arose in the east and swept over the encamped hosts. A gale raged all night and in the red twilight dawn there was a movement of the earth. The waters receded from the seashores and rolled back on themselves. There was a strange silence and men in the gloom. It was seen that the waters had parted leaving a passage between. The land had risen, but it was disturbed and trembled. The way was not straight or clear. The waters above were as if spun within a bowl. The swamp land alone remained undisturbed. From the horn of the destroyer came a high, shrilling noise, which stopped the ears of men. The slaves had been making sacrifices in despair. The lamentations were loud. Now before the strange sight, there was hesitation and doubt. For the space of a breath, they stood still and silent. Then all was confusion and shouting, some pressing forward into the waters against all who sought to flee back from the unstable ground. Then in exaltation, their leaders led them. One leader, Moses, my opinion, led them into the midst of the waters through the confusion. Yet many sought to turn back and to the host behind them while others fled along the empty shores. All became still over the sea and upon the shore, but behind the earth shook, and boulders split with a great noise. The wrath of heaven was removed to a distance and stood upward of the two hosts. I have to think about that one. I'm guessing it was Moses and Elijah, but still the host of Pharaoh held its ranks. Firm and resolved before the strange and awful happenings, and undaunted by the fury which raged by their side, stern faces were lit darkly by the fiery curtain. Then the fury departed, and there was silence, stillness spread over the land, while the host of 
Pharaoh stood without movement in the red glow. Then with a shout, the captains went forward and the host rose up behind them. Uh, this is, I believe, the younger Pharaoh. And you know how young people are. The curtain of fire had rode upon. The, the curtain of fire had rode up into a dark billowing cloud which spread out as a canopy. There were stirrings of the water, but they followed the evil doers past the place of the great whirlpool. The passage was confused in the midst of the waters and the ground beneath unstable. Here in the midst of a tumult of waters, Pharaoh fought against the hindmost of his slaves, which means uh, he was uh, slaughtering those that were too slow to keep up. Pharaoh fought against the hindmost of the slaves and prevailed over them. And there was a great slaughter amid. There was a great slaughter amid the sand, the swamp, and the water. The slaves cried out in despair, but their cries were unheeded. Their possessions were scattered behind them as they fled, so that the way was easier for them than for those who followed. Then the stillness was broken by a mighty roar, and through the rolling pillars of cloud, the wrath of the destroyer descended upon the hosts. Oh, the hosts. I was wrong. It's not uh, Moses and Elijah. It's the two different armies. The heavens roared as with a thousand thunders the bowels of the earth were sundered, and earth shrieked. Shrieked. <laughs> not sure I could... <laughs> Wrong movie. Shrieked in agony. The cliffs were torn away and cast down. The dry ground fell beneath the waters, and great waves broke upon the shore, sweeping in rocks from seaward. The great surge of rocks and waters overwhelmed the chariots of the Egyptians who went before the footsmen. Footsmen are the guys with the spears, you know, that kind of finishes you off. A great surge of rocks and waters overwhelmed the chariots of the Egyptians. So in other words, uh, tanks go first and then the infantry kind of cleans up the leftovers. The chariots of the pharaoh was hurled into the air as if by a mighty hand and was crushed in the midst of the rolling waters. Tidings of the disaster came back by Rigab, son of Toma who hastened on ahead of the terrified survivors because of his burning, a burning desire to uh, get to his uh, half-brother and, uh, well, I guess they had a family feud going on. Uh, he brought reports unto the people that the host had been destroyed by blast and deluge. The captains had gone, the strong men had fallen, and none remained to command. Therefore the people revolted because of the calamities which had befallen them. Cowards slunk from their lairs and came forth boldly to assume the high offices of the dead. Comely and noble women, their protectors gone, were their prey. Of the slaves, the greater number had perished before the host of Pharaoh. Uh, that meant uh, Moses' people were slaughtered. The broken land lay helpless, and invaders came out of the gloom like carrion. A strange people came up against Egypt, and none stood to fight, for strength and courage were gone. Uh, this is actually in the history books. Uh, there was an invading army south of... Uh, <laughs> south of the United States, no, south of uh, Egypt that had just been waiting f to find a weakness. And uh, the invaders led by Alikanan, A-L-K-E-N-A-N, -A -A I'll have to look that up, came up out of the land of gods because of the wrath of heaven which had laid their land waste. There too had been a plague of reptiles and ants, signs and omens and earthquakes. 
So this was just not, as you, you read your King James, uh, this was worldwide, but at the time, God was only interested in his people, where once was the Garden of Eden, and today is the root of all wars, with nothing but sand, very little water, and that's what man does, but that was just my commentary. There also had been turmoil, disaster, disorder, and famine with the gray breath of the destroyer sweeping the ground and stopping the breath of men. And Torah gathered together the remnants of his fighting men, which I believe that's, let me go back here, A-L-K-E-N-A-N and I think, you know, I went to college, whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, Akintunin gathered together the remnants of his fighting men and the fighting men who were left in Egypt and so set forth to meet the children of darkness who came out of the eastern mountains by way of the wilderness and by Yethnobis. Well, we all know who the uh, current victors are, don't we, in Afghanistan. They fell upon the stricken land from behind the great cloud before the lifting of the darkness and before the coming of the purifying winds. Rejib went with Pharaoh and met the invaders at Herosha. But the hearts of the Egyptians were faint within them. Their spirits were no longer strong, and they fell away before the battle was even lost. Oh. Deserted by the gods above and below, their dwellings destroyed, their households scattered, they were as men already half dead. Their hearts were still filled with terror, and with the memory of the wrath which had struck them from out of heaven, they were still filled with the memory of a fearsome sight of the destroyer, and they knew not what they did. The pharaoh did not return to the city. He lost his heritage, was seized by a demon for many days. His women were polluted and his estates plundered. What was the name of that guy that uh, was the king of the world in the Old Testament and uh, went nuts and ate grass? <laughs> like a cow for seven years and the Lord restored him and he was fine anyway we're getting close to the end commentary time I only got a couple of minutes left the children of darkness defiled the temples with rams <laughs> and ravished women who were crazed and did not resist these are the invaders from the east of Egypt so they were attacked by the south, they were attacked by the east, and Moses escaped to the north. I wonder if he uh, had some inside info there. They enslaved all who were left, the old, young men, and boys. They oppressed the people, and their delight was in mutilation and torture. Well... If you're not getting the point of this story by now, Pharaoh abandoned his hopes and fled into the wilderness beyond the provinces of the lake, which is in the west. So he was attacked by the south, he was attacked by the east. Moses went to the north, and he went to the west. And this is not the, I think this is the third pharaoh that happened all within about three, four, five years after their dad died, I don't know. He lived a goodly life among the sand wanderers and wrote books, sand wanderers. I guess we know what those are. Uh, you ride camels, and 
you go from oasis to oasis and you will write your memoirs. <laughs> but here's the happy ending of the story. For any of those of you who have hung with me through this three-part series, good times came again, even under the invaders, and ships sailed upstream. Now the Nile, you know, flows south. Evidently during this time it was flowing north. Just like the Mississippi did at New Orleans in 2021, the air was purified, the breath of the destroyer passed away, and the land became filled again with growing things. Life was renewed throughout the whole land. Uh, he was taught these things. He taught these things to the children of light in the days of darkness after the rebuilding before the death. And I'm not sure here. I think it's Akhenaten, but... So anyway, all good stories must come to an end. It's always best if they have happy endings. Oh, by the way, this land, and in our tongue, chose it for saving. It has not been seen until the latter days, which is actually just recently. Well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> Praying for everybody out there. It's been a wicked 2021, and like I said, 2020 said to 2021. What do you think? How how you think I did? And 2021 said to 2020, "Here, hold my beer and watch this." <laughs>